Welcome back. <laughs> All right, let's look at Deadly Northern Lights. I'm sitting here at the big board, literally a big board. And I'm looking at, unfortunately, uh, it's turn one, and it's the we're down in the southern portion of the maps, and we're looking at Deadly Northern Lights, the southern section here, and trying to work out just what the hell happened. <clears throat> Because the the uh, poles landed their marines here uh, within within this task force. The task force counter is back over on the chart. Uh, there's another task force here that uh, is is about to land, but I forgot that I had to roll for surrender the moment that we land a unit on sovereign soil of Denmark. And we'd already gone through some naval bits where as the task forces went through and various other ships went through, the uh, ASW surveillance and the subs all got the, their uh, opportunity to take some pot shots at some ships. And in fact, the Soviets lost a ship. Uh, the CG, I think it was. I can't read it from here. Maybe it was a frigate. I don't know. But uh, something sunk. And there were some steps lost on the... the the east, uh, the West German uh, submarine forces, which are pretty nifty, actually, they're pretty, pretty strong. But the big news is, the moment we land, and this was a undefended hex, I, I elected, and it wouldn't have mattered where it could have been anywhere in any of these hexes. I elected to uh, occupy all of the hexes of Copenhagen with units because I wanted to prevent the immediate role of a one through fifteen being a surrender. And if someone lands on any hex in Denmark here, there's a one through six roll that they'll surrender. Uh, you can see the die, it's a six. So the Danes surrender without a fight. Uh, they're fickle, they're undependable. They're soft, small men. I, I just, I don't understand. This is just not cool and I'm not happy about them. I was looking forward to as the Soviet plays smacking the snot out of these guys and uh and getting a little more experience with the combat tables and in fact i am actually going to go conduct uh, uh this uh, combat here just for the heck of it I'm, we're going to knock out this hawk location uh hawk site and attack this little dinky brigade here for fun so that's really a heartbreaker that now means all of these yeah i'll tell you what it means when they surrender <clears throat> Unless differently stated, blah, 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 right. Uh, NATO cannot trace his supply path through surrendered country, uh, except through hexes occupied by or in the Zarko of a friendly combat unit. Uh, Warsaw Pact, that probably should also read uh, uh, no Zarks by the enemy as well, but that stands to reason because that's how it works without this surrender situation, so it's probably okay. Warsaw Pact gains uh, control gains control of any base inside the surrender country and not occupied by NATO unit. NATO controls or uh, retains control of any base inside the surrender country and occupied by NATO unit at the instant of surrender. NATO air squadrons are moved to another NATO control base and put in the U section. Well, that's honky dory. Uh, NATO helicopter squadrons on a base no longer under NATO control must be moved to any other valid airport and it looks like they are oh okay they can't be used in the current action phase the helicopter units unable to reach a valid field are eliminated that's cute uh, Warsaw Pact may trace the supply path yeah blah 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 Warsaw Pact may use bases inside the surrounding country subject to the standard rules and limitations well that is a, just a kick in the you know whatsies I think that's going to cause a major reconfiguration of the planning on the NATO part. And here's one of the reasons why. We have a convoy that's pegged to be landing and delivering assets this turn into Denmark. We're now going to have to cancel that and move it somewhere else, probably up to Norway. It's going to take a little bit longer. It's going to be a longer trip, uh, which means less total reinforcements per uh, uh, supply per turn delivered and uh, 
that's going to be hard. That's problematic. All right, we may just be. Uh, I tell you what, if uh, if this all works out the way I think it does, this may mean we won't need the southern portion of the maps unless we invade Sweden as well. And it might be fun to go for the big win now that the Danes are out of it. I'm going to try and capture. There's some capital city here somewhere that we'll try and capture. Uh, I think that's what the, the surrender criteria are for them. But anyway, pretty kind of uh, out of the blue, 30% chance of that happening. So it's not a small chance, but it's not a huge chance either. Uh, and you know, you would have, I would have expected or hoped that we would have lasted maybe two, three turns. So, so at least I could get some reinforcements in here, get a couple of uh, maybe uh, British or American smaller brigades into Denmark and protect at least this little island area here and and hold off a little bit and tie up forces because now what this is going to do is free up a lot of uh, Baltic Sea forces to a uh, press hard on the Guit Gap press hard on the Shelton Hufenhafen whatever it's called uh, uh, front uh, to the basically the Jutland area to the south and also allow me to send air and other forces by transport as needed north. I can now immediately begin attacking the southern portion of Norway right here. And, you know, if, if things all went well, by turn six or turn eight, we could wrap this sucker up and call her done. Unless the Americans and the British have uh, some grand plan B, which I can tell you they don't at the moment. All right. Thought I'd share that with you. Interesting stuff. Uh, it, this is, yeah, very cool. All right, later.